with the beautiful Tabby Allen. I want to say thank you so, so much for joining us tonight, whether you're watching live or watching the pre-recording. And tonight is what? I don't even know what date it is. Somebody could tell me what day it is. Wednesday, the 19th of August. And um, I'm only a few days away from my birthday and only a few weeks away from Christmas. I love Christmas. I know there are lots of people out there that don't celebrate Christmas and don't want to know about Christmas. And I respect everyone's uh, view and so on. But I love Christmas. Christmas is a time where Christians all over the world celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Now we know that Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December. We definitely know that and uh, we give God thanks. But I want to say welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. It's an honor and a privilege to be with you tonight. And as always, I love to start with giving you a bit of an uh, update as to what's happening uh, this week. And um, we have our Illuminate coming up. And I will be hosting uh, this Sunday's Illuminate on Sunday, the 23rd of August. So... Come and join us, and it's always fun. We do have over five, 600 people, sometimes over 1,000 people that come by. So we'd love to have you. So please, please come and join us uh, for our Sunday evening service. Again, we're giving advance warning, um, in our notice, should I say, <laughs> of our corporate fasting and prayer. I'm looking forward to it with great excitement for you to the 18th of September. So put that date in your diary. It's going to be amazing. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. fasting and prayer. Either the full fast or the Daniel fast, whatever way you decide to do so. Obviously, we want people to take medical advice as well and not just to jump into something without getting advice if you know that you are unwell. All right. Do bear in mind also that prayer is going on every day except Saturday in our region and uh, the Zoom details are there. You can also find these information on our corporate uh, website as well as our regional website cogop.com. Um, Bible studies is going on every night as well so what we've done now is Monday night is dedicated to um, um, marriage, divorce, remarriage, family, that type of thing. So that's Monday night, and uh, we'll be looking at how we can enrich that um, by having other people onto the program, answering questions, teaching. So Monday night is based around the family, about you know marriages, divorces, remarriage, and answering questions as well, and so on. Tuesday is something different. We haven't specifically stated what Tuesday is, but Wednesday is definitely youth night. Okay, Wednesday is youth night. And that's why we got Tabby and I'll be introducing her to you in the next two minutes. Thursday, um, that's um, my night. That's Errol Williams' night. And I'll be focusing on Revelation. I'll be going through the book of Revelation from chapter 1, verse 1, to chapter 22, verse 22, or something like that. So join me on Thursday if you're interested in the study of the um, book of Revelation. So that's what I will be doing. We're also asking if there's anyone who would like to support the ministry. It's very costly, in fact. A lot of people don't realize how costly it is to actually um, do these um, Bible studies and every night and so on and to actually keep things going professionally, to be there on time, to do things professionally, to have lights in, and so everything is done really um, professionally. The software alone is worth 1,200 pounds, that's the, well, dollars. Uh, that's the cost of the software, and then we have to upgrade it each year and all kind of stuff. So if you'd like to support us, the details are on, online. It doesn't come to me personally. It goes into the local church in Wembley, and then we make the payments out of our bank account. So you, whatever you give us goes directly into our bank account, all right? That's how it works. And then we have, you know, people who authorize um, the payments and then payments are made. So I don't have control over it. Um, other people w uh, work with me, um, have the control and, and that's the best way to do things anyway. So uh, that's the way we do it. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Hewitt, um, thank you. How are you doing? Long time. Thanks for joining us. Well, at this time, it's time for me to introduce the beautiful um, sister Tabby Allen. She's going to lead 
and tonight youth focus and she will pray and tell you exactly what's happening tonight and you may see me a little later so over to tabby hi good evening everyone <laughs> thank you once again thank you so much for joining us um for another youth night wednesday night is youth night so thank you so much for joining us and also just thank you for joining us throughout the week you know for the um daily bible studies and i feel like me personally i feel like this time um you know it's a season for marriage i feel like it's a season the conversations that i've been hearing not just from church here not just from the weekly bible studies but also just conversations that i myself have been having um as the wise virgin leader and also from other people so i feel like this is a season where we discuss marriage and i i love what um bishop errol Pastor Errol has says, I call him Pastor Errol because you know he's my pastor. <laughs> so I love what he said um, in regarding to let's build um, better marriages. Um, I know in the past, not everyone, um, they had the information or they have the information like we have now. But I just, I just thank you so much for teaching in that regard so that we can build better marriages. I myself as a young person who desires to be married, not married as yet, but I look forward to learning um, principles biblically and how I can develop myself as a godly woman and also a godly wife for when that time comes. So thank you once again um, for joining us. Like we said, Wednesday night is youth night and I am Tabby Allen. Um, tonight is going to be a mixture actually. Um, we're going to look at a few Bible verses, a few Bible scriptures, and we're also going to have a conversation with Pastor Errol. So <laughs> I look forward to that a little bit later on. So guys, do stick with us. Do stick with me um, as we continue in the Lord. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear a hallelujah? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, God, so much. So what I wanted to do before I dive into our discussion is just speak a little word from Isaiah 55. Now, this was a word that was given to me a while ago, I think a few years ago, and I was so blessed or so grateful to be able to minister it at LWF um, last year. And it speaks about desire, desires let's put it that way. And I'm going to read mostly from the New Living Translation. If you see me looking to my right, yes, I did raise my hand because my left and right directions, I haven't quite gotten that down as yet. So if you see me looking to my right, that's because my Bible is there. Um, so it says this, if anyone thirsts, come and drink. Even if you have no money, come. Take your choice of wine or milk. It's all free. Why spend money on food that does not give you strength? So why spend money on food that does not give you strength? And I'll just break down that word a little bit just for clarity. Um, and it says, listen to me and you will eat what is good. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen and you will find life. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the unfailing love I promised to David. See how I use him to display my power amongst the peoples. I made him a leader amongst nations. You also will command nations you do not know let me repeat that because i highlighted that in my bible right so god is basically speaking a word over you today and i'm going to declare it over your life you also will command nations you do not know and people unknown to you will come running to obey because i the lord your god the holy one of israel have made you glorious and this is what the Lord is saying to you. I, the Lord of Israel, have made you glorious. Seek ye the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. Let the wicked change their ways 
and banish the very thought of wrongdoing. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God, for he will forgive generously. And the word of God continues, and I know you know this scripture verse. It says, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, saith the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Now listen to this. It says, the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. Remember, we're speaking about desires here. And I'll break down. There are different things that we desire, whether you desire to be married, whether you desire a companion, whether you desire friends, whether you desire to be popular, or whether you just desire to be loved. No matter what age you are, we all have a desire. So now this is speaking about desires. And I'm going to repeat verse 10. It says, the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it always, someone say always, and it always produces fruit. It will, it will accomplish all I want it to and it will prosper everywhere I send it. You will live in joy and peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into singing. Sorry, it will burst into songs. And the trees of the field will clap their hands. Where once they were thorns, express trees will grow. Where nettles grow, myrtles will sprout up. These events will I bring will bring great honor to the Lord's name. They will be an everlasting sign of his power and love. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. And I just pray, God, that as you declared in your word, that it will produce fruit. Now, what is God saying to us? I believe, I believe this word, you know, this whole thing sums up desires. Whatever we are searching for, the word of God says it is found in him. And I remember as a young lady myself, there were many things that I desired. And mainly it was to be loved. I always desired to be loved. I always desired to be liked. I desired someone to love me. And what that meant for me is that I went looking for that love. And it took me to many wrong places, many, many wrong places. But God is saying here, if you are thirsty, come and drink. If you have no money, come. I have your choice of wine and milk. It is all free. Why do you spend money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does you no good? He's saying, listen to me. And you will eat what is good. You will enjoy the finest food. Come to me with your ears wide open. So he really wants you to just listen to him. Listen to what he's saying to you. At this moment in time, what you believe the Lord is saying to you. He wants you. He wants to have a relationship with you. And as I think that lockdown has lifted and many things are reopened, many shops are reopened, amusement arcades, they're reopened, the cinema, that's reopened. But I don't want you to forget all this time through lockdown, the time that you spent with God, but really use it to come closer to God. We've had illuminate services and we've had Bible studies, you know, your church. They've been so wonderful and fantastic running services on Zoom. And I really do hope that you were able to plug in, which means just log on to some of those services so that you're able to receive the word. No matter how old we are, we all need the word of God to survive. It's paramount. It's like food. It's like our daily bread. We cannot, we cannot go a long period of time without eating. Otherwise, we feel weak. 
we cannot go a long period of time without drinking, without having any liquid, because then we feel dehydrated. It is actually the same with the word of God. The longer you stay away from God, the longer that you stay away from reading his word, the longer that you stay away from him, is the weaker you feel. And I don't know about you, but I know for myself, when I have stayed away from God, I am so miserable. I'm so cranky. I'm just being honest. I've got like the shortest temper. And I'm like, okay, God, I need to come back to you. I need to come back to your word. I need to spend some time with you. I need to lock off Instagram. I need to lock down Facebook. I need to lock off WhatsApp. Yes, WhatsApp, you know, because WhatsApp can be addictive too. And I just really need to just spend that time with you. And this is what the word of God is saying to you. You know, come, whatever your need is and whatever your desire is, here is the key word, desire. Whatever your desire is, it is found in God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I know you've heard this scripture many, many times before. But what is it saying? It's saying exactly that. Seek God first and his righteousness and he will be able to bless you. As I think, as I say those words, I actually think of a poem that our dear sister Rochelle, she wrote, um, I think it's Solomon Wisdom, and those words just meditated in my heart, you know? Um, but seek God, seek God. I know some of you have received your A-level results, and I pray that it's what you desired. And if it's not, I just pray that God's covering over you, that he will still direct you to where you desire to be. But first and foremost, I encourage you to please come back to God, okay? Your desires are, are, are found in God. Whatever you need, you know, God is saying, why pay for things that does not satisfy you? So why go back to your friends or go back to your old ways now that lockdown has lifted you know why go back to those old ways that you were before when god is giving you something new you know in psalms 37 or psalms 34 i believe um it says commit thy ways unto the lord and thy thoughts shall be established commit thy ways unto the lord and thy thoughts shall be established your ways your desires your wants, everything, commit it to God. God, I desire this. Lord, I desire that. Father God, please help me along my way. Help me, Lord God, to just show me what I can do. Show me how I can go about it. You know, Lord God, open doors for me that's never been opened to me before. I pray God for favor upon my life. You know, these are the kind of things, Lord God, you told me to seek you and I will find you. So here I am. I'm looking to you. I'm crying out to you, God. I just need an answer from you. Direct my steps, direct my path, which means, Lord God, wherever I will go, please direct them. Amen. So these are my few words on Isaiah 55. Brethren, youth, young and old, no matter how old you are, we all have a desire. But that desire is found in God. And like I said, I know that this seems to be the season for marriage. This seems to be the season where everyone is discussing marriage you know so at this moment in time i'm just going to bring back pastor error ask pastor error if he can just join me and we will have a discussion <laughs> hi pastor I'm very well, thanks greetings wonderful word you shared with us amen thank god thank god i pray that you hold on to these words hold on Anyway, let me not get too excited sitting over here. So, Pastor Errol, we spoke that this is a season um, for marriage. And I have a question for you. And, guys, please feel free to ask us any questions um, in Facebook or YouTube, wherever you are watching. And we will do our best to answer these questions, okay? So, Pastor Errol, one of the questions that I wanted to know, in terms of marriage, you have daughters. So as a father to a daughter, 
what are some of the things that you have said to your daughter in regards to maybe finding a husband in what are what are the advice that you've given them well well first of all well thanks for very, very much for inviting me in this show first of all i think um I must first of all preface this by saying even though I shared lots of things with them it wasn't things that they followed they didn't necessarily follow them but one of the things um that comes to mind and just to let the audience know sister Tabby did not tell me what she's going to ask me so I'm just giving it as it is one of the things that I said to my daughters um, is that the best thing that the best gift that they can give to um, their husband and and their wedding night is their virginity, um, their virginity, and that was one of my my emphasis throughout the years to them. It didn't happen that way because obviously, obviously I got <laughs> I've got six grandchildren and none of them is married, so obviously um, the the older two did not follow my advice. But that was one of the things I shared with them. The other thing I shared, I just shared three things. And another thing I said to mm -hmm. them was, uh, look for a man that loves God more than they love you. And um, you, 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 it's hard to go wrong. So look for that man. But then again, my daughters, none of the, well, one of my daughters, a Christian fantas, you know, but the, the first two are not um, Christians. So probably that advice may not, um be carried through in the way i'd like it to have done because i wanted them to become christians and to to you know find a man that loves god loves god with all his heart soul mind and strength and and so on and the third thing that i advised them i i did give them the seven things to look for in a in a husband in a husband which was one of them was you know love god and uh, the, the third thing I said to them to do was to make sure that they had a clear vision of what it is that they want to achieve in life. Clear vision. You know, the, the scripture talks about Proverbs 29, 18, where there's no vision, the people perish. So those are the three things I remember. And just to say as well, um, with my daughters, I met with them for 18 years, every morning, Monday to Friday, from 7 p.m., to 7 45 p.m so we always had our what i would call our morning worship morning church we had our own church we had we had so much things going on yeah so let me stop it there because i don't want to take up too much time talking but that's what we did 18 years of it actually i know that that's wonderful thank you thank you pastor um so when you said about things that you should look for i think one of my favorite scriptures is hosea Hosea chapter two, and it speaks, just give the background story for anyone who doesn't know Hosea. Um, it speaks about an unfaithful Israel. Now, many people might think, well, what's that got to do with me? But from Hosea, just get my scripture up, from Hosea, um, I think it was verse 18 onwards, it gives us an example of the things that we should look for in a husband. Okay. If we are speaking from a, a, uh, I'm a lady, so I can speak from a lady's point of view. <laughs> so it says, Hosea, the Lord asked Hosea to marry a, I believe it was a prostitute to pass error. Please correct me if I, if I stray off. Um, and that prostitute symbolized where Israel was actually straying away from her first love. And we know our first love is Christ. So th that links perfectly again with Isaiah 55 in terms of desire and not straying away from God, but really coming back to know God. So, <laughs> so in um, God asked Hosea to marry a prostitute, okay? And with that prostitute, like I said, it symbolized Israel strain away. And um, God was kind of speaking a parable in that, in that time, using the marriage as a marriage between God and his people. Mm. Am, am, I, am I correct? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah? Correct. Yes, I, yes. <laughs> so uh, it says that, 
they've strayed away and God basically is calling them back. And just like with us in our relationship with God, God wants to have a relationship with us. So when you go astray, God is going to call you back. Mm. So in this word, in Hosea, God is calling them back. And it says here from verse 14, and I'll just read out some of the attributes. Maybe mm. this might have been some of the ones that were on your list that you spoke sorry. with your daughters. You can let me know. Yes, no <laughs> you can let me know. Um, so it says, um, one of the ones, I'm just going to read it quickly. It says, I will return to her vineyards and transforms the valley of trouble. Again, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. Um, valley of trouble into a gateway of hope she will give herself to me there as she did a long time ago and when she was young to me that symbolizes a covenant when i freed her from captivity into egypt mm -hmm. so that to me symbolized the covenant in verse 16 there's a key word it says you will call me husband you know so for me that symbolizes again when we stand up to the altar and we say i do um in verse 17 it says and you will never remember them again so god is replacing the old covenant with the new covenant mm -hmm. and continuing it's i i've picked out a few keywords and it said protection mm -hmm. you have to be afraid so there is protection there there is safety i will make you my wife forever so again he's given you a promise and I will be faithful to you and make you mine. And you will finally know me as the Lord. Mm -hmm. Again, a covenant. Like God is, he's opening himself. And what is coming to my mind, he's being transparent with you. He's opening himself with you. So in terms of looking for the guy that you think, um, maybe this is one of the things that you share with your daughter, protector, he can protect you you know he's making a covenant you know he wants to marry you um he will be faithful to you so he's been open and transparent about his intentions for you would you mm -hmm. would you agree yes absolutely absolutely and i think um, go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. i think as well sometimes um in terms of transparency it's not really hiding um what the intentions are for the relationship but being open whether you're open with one another or you're open with your parents you know you're speaking to your parents daddy maybe they might come to see i'm role playing here maybe they might come mm -hmm. to you and say daddy you know i met this guy and um, what do you think about him and they're sharing with you they're not hiding you know is, is that in a kind of sense is that the way you think that they should go about it the things that they should look for well, um, let's put it this way. Um, my two oldest daughters, um, Samantha and Pepsi, did not come to me to say this is their boyfriend or whatever. Probably because they knew my my um, teachings and that I would not have ever approved of the what they were doing and the way they were doing it. So they did not come to me uh, with that. But what I have heard them say, not to me directly is that daddy was right and that was uh. something that came back however on my third daughter when she was going out with uh, this gentleman she decided to bring the gentleman to me and i was able to meet with him sat with him talk with him and just have a dialogue it, uh, you know that's the ideal i would you know that's what i would love i've always said to my children allow me your daddy to choose the man for you um because i think i would be choosing with my head rather than with my heart whereas right. they're choosing more with their heart you know how they feel and so on and um you know it's 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 not the way we do things in the western world especially in the black community where the father or the mother is allowed to have a say in what you do mm -hmm. and so on you know my children and most children are going to do what they 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 feel to do and desire to do and you know whether that be the right way or not who knows but i would i would i would love it if they came to me and said daddy this is my intention like my third daughter did and i'm not mm -hmm. saying to her yay nay if you like i mean i would do if i need if there's a need to but um the gentleman she brought was he he also wanted to meet with me he also wanted to have that conversation 
which right. I enjoyed. I must say, I did enjoy it. It was the first time and probably the last. I don't know if it'll ever happen again. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's what I would love to see happen. But we have to, we have to really look at the reality, really. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, I must say, when I was uh, seeing um, people... <laughs> never told my dad either <laughs> i say people i i used to just introduce them as my friends i never said oh yeah uh i think maybe because i was afraid i was, just, <laughs> I was afraid yeah. about what my dad would say um so i i did not do it but that was then i think definitely now i've grown up and gained a lot more wisdom and i think just the wisdom of a father i think we don't yeah. We probably don't value or cherish the wisdom and the knowledge that our fathers have, you know, or even our parents, they have, because like you said, we probably choose with our heart and not our head. And we probably mm. overlook certain things that, <laughs> that, you know, we really should be looking out for. So I know you've done marriage counselling. So Pastor, I, I do want to ask you this. Um, as you are doing the marriage counselling, what are your three top advices or top questions that you do ask the couple? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm completely I'm, taking you off guard. I'm no, sorry. No, no, no. I, I, you know, the three of them come to mind immediately and I've said it over and over on this show. And, um, you know, I say the same thing over and over because two of them is, is, is vital. And the first one is this, is the, the most important thing in a marriage that keeps the marriage really um, going forward is, and we all know this, is love. You know, love God, love, love each other, and love yourself. And if you can love God, love yourself, love each other, um, that marriage cannot fail. It's technically impossible to fail. It cannot under no shape or, shape or form. The scripture does say love never fails. So love is the ingredient that will <laughs> succeed every day, every day, and every day. And that's number one. Number two is the only thing I know that destroys marriages. There's only one thing. Everything can be grouped under this heading, and it is selfishness. Selfishness. Every time a man goes out and sleeps with somebody else, extramarital affair, if the woman does it, it's being selfish. It's being self-centered. I'm thinking only of me and not thinking of the hurt of my spouse and so on. So selfishness destroys a marriage, you know, every day, every day, and every day. And what I've noticed in my relationship with my wife, every time one of us is being selfish, there's a problem. And the mm. moment we begin to focus on each other, um, it's, it's a totally different story. The third and final thing, and it's interesting you know, when you're dating somebody, you're going out with somebody um, for the first time, you haven't slept with that person yet, you just try on the person out, see how they are and getting to know them. It's amazing how much fun the two of you may have during that time. You go to the cinema, you go to the restaurant, you play snakes and ladders, you play Ludo, you play all kind of stuff that you never thought. But you're just having fun. And what, the thing I would mm -hmm. say is, a relationship that does not have fun, excitement, entertainment in it is going to die. It's going to die slowly. And, um, you know, having fun means going away on holiday together. You know, and, you know if you can't go on holiday, you, you go to the Kentucky together. You, you know, you play Ludo together. I just want to end it, end it by saying, um, on my wedding anniversary, I think a couple of years ago, um, People got together and sent my wife and I on, on a, um, what's it called, an, a um, limousine ride. Right. And after the, the two of us was on the limousine ride, we would then pick up all the girls and the grandchildren, and then they would join us. So June and I was in the um, limousine, and we had a good chat and laugh and joke, and we were drinking and all kind of stuff. And we are just looking out the window, and I had my phone in my hand, and... Um, I don't know what made me do it, but the thought occurred to me, you know, uh, while I'm there, you know, June is lying on my shoulder. I was playing backgammon, um, just playing backgammon as a game on my phone. My wife turned to me and she said, um, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I didn't want to tell her, actually, but I couldn't lie. I said, I'm playing backgammon, backgammon. She said, 
let me click let me give you a game now oh. what made me laugh was i taught my wife to play backgammon around 30 years previously and uh, we used to have so much fun playing backgammon playing luda but as soon as the child was born all the fun in that sense died uh, what was amazing was we played backgammon this was the first time she had played in probably 30 years and what was amazing, I'm a professional backgammon player and I play in different clubs and so on before. And, and I used to be Yahoo number one backgammon champion way back in the years, around 25 years ago. And my wife won, she won the game. And uh, I laughed and the reason why I laugh is, is how much fun we used to have when we first started going out. And as soon as the children come in, there's a tendency for the fun to to diminish and to become zero if you like so i'm saying to family if you want to get that boost and that excitement back in your relationship make sure you have a lot of fun and fun can be done in a lot of different ways and one of the things i would say as well is to couples listening you should have different bank accounts and one of your bank accounts should be your entertainment bank account so make sure if you're married and you're listening to me open up a bank account which is your entertainment bank account and put money in it every now and then for your holiday, for your excitement, for going away in a dream weekend or whatever, whatever. But those are my three, wow. love, selfishness, and fun. Okay, selflessness. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never heard, so thank you. Uh, I've never heard of the, uh, the games bank account before. I've heard of having probably two bank accounts because I have these conversations, like I said, um, lead of the wise mm. virgins and we have a call every Thursday and we discuss a lot of things. Last week we discussed why marriage, we discussed prenups and diary last week. And the week before that, we also discussed about having different bank accounts. Now mm -hmm. we were saying that you would have, you probably have two, each family is going to be different. Each relationship is going to be different depending on how you want to run your household. Um, but we said about having a bank account that you'll probably pay your bills into. And then a bank, your bank account. So if you wanted to do anything that you're able to use that money to maybe if you wanted to go shopping or maybe if you wanted to treat your wife or your husband, you know, you wanted to do something, but I've never heard of having a games bank account. So is that is that like three bank accounts or still the two? Well, you know, the scripture says, can two walk together except they agree? So it's if the couples agree to have five bank accounts, seven bank accounts, that's perfectly OK. Uh, it depends on what you're going to use those different bank accounts for. So if you're going to use this one to pay all the bills and you're going to use this one for my, you know, entertainment account, or I'm going to use this one before we're going to be buying this property or business, whatever. So it's up to the couples how many bank accounts they wish to have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven really makes no difference. It's up to them making the agreement and going forward that way. I think the danger comes <laughs> when a couple have two bank accounts because they don't trust each other. And this, to me, is a dangerous thing because I have never been to a company that has two bank accounts, two separate bank accounts. They've got one bank, main bank account. They've got different, um, um, you know, accounts for different things. But it is really one bank account that everything comes mm -hmm. under. But when you talk about husbands and wives, they're not getting on. They don't trust each other. Uh, so the uh. husband doesn't know how much is in the wife's bank account. The wife doesn't know how much is in the bank account. Uh, husband, the wife doesn't know how much is in the husband, the husband doesn't know how much is in the wife. That's a recipe for disaster um, because you've got two separate bank accounts in the sense that they're not together. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Wow. Never thought about it that way, actually. I just thought the two make so much sense. Um, mm. I, I guess in more things, then you must be transparent, you know, there must be visibility. Um, and openness and communication with what each each are doing. Not saying that it's wrong, but I have not looked at it like that. So 
Uh, wow, thank you. <laughs> I'm learning. I would love to know for those who are on Facebook and YouTube, I'd love to know what do you think? Uh, how how do you do things if you're married or if you desire to be married or, you know, you're thinking about it? How do you do your, your bank accounts, you know? Do you agree? Do you disagree? So let us know, okay? Let's have a conversation and let us know. Um, so, Pastor, in terms of, um, you know, the youth, the, the young adults, I don't know, has anyone ever expressed to you the feeling of being lonely? You know, have they ever spoken to you about being lonely? Maybe they're single um, or maybe something that you've seen and what advice have you given them? Yeah, I, I, I have never spoke. I don't think I've ever spoken to a youth, to, when I say youth, between the age of, um, say, 12 to 30, have expressed to me that they are lonely. I can't remember any of hand, but I've spoken to a lot of single women and single mothers who, yes, are lonely um, because they would like to get into a relationship and uh, mm -hmm. they've been honest, they've been transparent and there's nothing wrong with saying that. There's nothing wrong with feeling that because we were all made, you know, to, to have a partner. And uh, there are lots of women, lots of men, mostly women who are very lonely at the moment. My advice to them is to stay as close to the Lord as you possibly can. That means to stay in his words, study his word, read his word, pray, make sure you got a good prayer life, a good life of study of God's word. Make sure you're in church services as much as you can. Um, you know, you know, I'm not saying that you should be in every single one, but, you know, as, you know, as much as possible. <laughs> and stay close to the Lord, because if the lonelier you feel, the more the enemy can pick you off and, and, and present temptations to you and offerings to you that you may, may not, will not be good for you. So um, loneliness is a real thing. It's, it's, it's affecting a lot of people. And it's not just, you know, single people as well there are people who are mm. in marriages and are lonely you know they have their partners mm. but they're lonely because they're just not getting on and um, i'm saying stay close to the lord make sure you're absolutely close to the lord and if you're in a marriage for example make sure you're doing everything right you see because it's, it's one thing saying i'm lonely but maybe i am lonely and the reason why my spouse is treating me the way he or she is treating me is because of my negative actions so I've got to make absolutely certain in my relationship that I'm doing everything that is right or, you know, and I need to find out for my wife as well. You know, am I doing things right? Because if, 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 if I give you my assessment, I will tell you, man, I'm absolutely perfect you know, to have in my relationship. Um, but if you listen to my wife, if you had my wife here, my wife would say to you, he doesn't give me no money. He doesn't help in the house. Are you following me? So, you know, we just got to yes. make sure we do our part as perfectly as possible uh, and stay close to the Lord as much as possible and obey God. Mm. Oh, Pastor, that hit me like a ton of bricks. I don't know if you saw my facial expressions, um, mm. mainly because I don't hide them that well. <laughs> In terms of are we doing, <laughs> are we doing, are we doing something that's wrong that maybe we do need to reevaluate ourselves? I mean, mm -hmm. that hit me so hard because that's so true um what are we doing the other the, a lot of the times um on our calls we have guys and they always they always ask us like so what are you doing you know so sometimes we can see the fault in other people but really are we looking at our, and i guess that goes with any relationships whether you know you are a mother and a son or you know you're always critiquing the other but are you taking time out to see it from the other person's point of view? Are you mm. examining yourself to see what are you doing? What can you do better? You know, I really love to hear from your wife, though, Pastor, what, <laughs> what she would say. Though, <laughs> yeah, if I'm completely if, honest. <laughs> I think I have an idea of what she would say. But, um, um, I, and, uh, you know, it's interesting because um, I've, Every time I speak to husbands, they blame the wife. And every time I speak to wife, they blame the husbands. So it's a blame game going on. Ever since Adam blamed Eve, you know, and then Eve blamed the serpent. We've been doing the blame game ever since. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> That's so true. It was the wife you gave me. Oh, but no one actually yes, no. stood in the... 
you know, took took thought for themselves. Um, are we, oh, Pastor, we have a lot of conversation. I'm just going to let it all out. We have a lot of conversations. Um, um, I tell you one of the things that's been said um, in terms of protection, okay? So we're going back and we know that God will be a protector. He protects us. He watches over us, okay? He's a He's a doting father. He He loves on us. He's a doting husband. He really does care about us. Um, and I know one of the things that someone has said about Adam, so hopefully I don't start a bit of controversy here tonight. <laughs> Please forgive me. Um, one of the things that they've said, um, in terms of Adam blaming even in flaving the servant, serpent, they've always said that Adam wasn't really looking after his wife in a kind of way, or someone also mentioned that. God gave Adam the commandment, but he never passed it over to Eve. What do you think? So Eve sinned because Adam didn't fully give her the instruction. So what do you think about that? That, that is utter foolishness. Um, that, that's not biblical. That's utter foolishness. Because if you look at the conversation that uh, Eve had with the serpent, and if I, if I turn to it, if you want to, it's, it's in Genesis. Uh, yes, I'm going to bring it up on the screen, actually, and um, see whether or not. Um, um, just give me one moment and I'm going to bring yeah. it up. I'd like to have you on the screen as well so that um, you can see. But go to Genesis for me in the meantime. And, um, and let me also... Oh dear. So if we look at Genesis um, chapter 3, I believe it is. And if you look at the conversation that um, was had, it says, let me see if I could move your picture a little bit over, over to you. Right. Yeah, it's technology for you. <laughs> And it says, Amen. Yeah, now, now the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field, the Lord of God, and, and, and um, which the Lord made. And, and he said unto the woman, and notice the question, he says, has God said you shall not eat of every tree, of mm -hmm. every tree of the garden? And the woman mm -hmm. said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. But of the, mm. listen to what she's saying. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, mm -hmm. neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So obviously she mm -hmm. knew the instructions. Now, what we're not sure of, whether she was there when Adam received it or whether it was Adam who told her, either way it makes no difference because she repeated she it verbatim almost to what God gave to um, Adam. So she was fully conversant with what um, she um, was not to do. So she was very, very clear about it. Notice her language. And the woman said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not uh -huh. eat of it, neither shall you touch it. Now, I don't think God said that. Um, and, mm -hmm. and but then she said, "Lest you die." She was fully conversant. She knew exactly. Yeah. And uh, obviously, the, the interesting thing about the story is that um, the, the the devil tricked her. Now, a lesson for me here is: don't spend no time with Satan, talking to him, having any dealings with him, because he will eventually trick you. Mm. So I I, mm. I don't. In actual fact, let me show you another scripture, actually. Um, I go over to James, um, James chapter 4, and I show you something that the scripture clearly states in verse 7. You see it there marked in 11. Okay. It says, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, resist. and he will flee. So what does that resist mean? Well, talk to the hand. Don't, don't have nothing to do with Satan. Don't talk to him, don't converse with him, don't have nothing to do with him. Just resist him. And she did not resist him. She entertained him. She discussed with him. She, it's like she's sitting down having a cup of tea and coffee mm -hmm. with him or a glass of wine, if you like. Don't sit with the enemy. Don't talk with him. Don't have nothing to do with him. 
resist him. That's what the scripture says. Resist him yeah. and he will flee. And so I don't have no conversation with Satan. I don't have no dealings with him. Um, I don't converse with him. I don't speak with him. Nothing, 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 nothing. I just resist him. Mm. Yeah. So wow. Eve, that makes me... Eve knew what was going on, yes. Okay. That's, that's a fair play. Um, the next question would be, where was Adam when this was happening? Is... <laughs> well, the scripture, was... the scripture doesn't say where he was. Yeah. The scripture does not say whether he was there or he was not there. The assumption is made that he wasn't there. Right. I have no idea where he was biblically. Uh, we can make assumptions if we want, and uh, it's not going to get us anywhere whatsoever because it's not biblically sound or backed up by any theological evidences uh, at all. Um, so it's just assumptions and opinion. But what the scripture did clearly state, uh, if we go back to, say, um, Genesis, let's, let's look at um, what it stated back in Genesis. Um, and they had the conversation and the woman saw that the tree was good for food and so on. Uh, notice what it says in verse in verse six. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband mm. with her. And he did it. It's possible that Adam was right there. The scripture doesn't say he wasn't. It's mm -hmm. only our theological views and beliefs that makes that suggestion. A preacher gets up and preaches and says, well, you know, you know, Eve wasn't there when God told Adam and Eve wasn't there when Adam wasn't there when Eve or when Eve and the devil were talking. These are all conjectures. These are all conjectures. Mm -hmm. They're not backed by biblical sound theological uh, reflection. The scripture doesn't tell us that uh, and so on. So mm -hmm. I don't make those assumptions to say, she was, she wasn't there. I just read the scripture and says, if you look at it clearly, it almost give the impression, it almost give a clearer impression that he was there than that he wasn't there because the scripture says, she took of the fruit thereof okay. and did eat and gave also mm -hmm. unto her husband and with her, mm -hmm. with her and he did eat. Mm -hmm. I, could, I could more make an argument that she, he was there and, and you know, than that he wasn't there. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But she took and she gave it to him and he did eat. Mm. Wow. It, it yeah, makes me it, think of... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go on, can, can. Oh, yeah. sorry. It, it, just, it just makes me think of temptation. And I mean, for any youth, young adults or anyone, basically, that's just listening. You know, um, the enemy will always present something. Can, if you realize, if you see here, it says, and she saw. So he tempts you first with your eyes. It's not that saying that, you know, he's not, he's going to tempt you in any way. He's going to allow you to see it. But at the mm. same time, when you know that this is going against God's will, like Pastor Errol has said, don't sit there and have a conversation mm. or trying to juggle whether this is good or whether that's bad and having a conversation with yourself about temptation. Temptation is not, is not God's will. God says, if you, um, I believe the scripture it is it's not the temptation that's the sin but it's the falling that's the sin i can't remember what scripture that is but it's when you yield oh yeah yield not to temptation for the yielding is sin so when you give in to temptation that's when you've actually sinned so i just really want you to realize how the enemy presents himself he allows you to see it he allows you so again that goes back to desires that we were speaking about if you have a desire but it's not the desire of the lord you know he's going to allow you to see that and if you go after that if you yield into those desires then you know that's not of god we know mm -hmm. the will of god we know what god would want you to do based upon the word of god but if when you yield into that that's when you're really sinning so just mm -hmm. really be mindful really be mindful of that so thank you pastor Emma. that's really what came to mind when you were sharing that and mm. that's yeah what you were just referring to is also in james um and it's a very powerful point you make it's when you yield to it yeah absolutely mm. yeah 
because he's he was he's going to show you things you know uh, especially mm. again we're talking about marriages we're talking about relationships you know he's going to show you that relationship that really looks really looks good you know but you know to yourself is not of god maybe the words that they speak maybe some of the things that maybe they that person wants you to do within that relationship you will know whether or not that that's of god or not i wouldn't want you to sit there and play around with that idea because it's a relationship and because you've had that desire for relationship or you have a desire to be married or whatever the case may be maybe you desire to pass your exams i don't know i'm, I'm throwing things out here and you cheat you know, that's, that's a temptation. We don't want you to yield into that, you know, or you lie about something, you know, maybe a degree or whatever. Just just throwing thought out there. Guys, don't yield to temptation. But like Pastor, Pastor Errol says, just go back to God. Commit thy ways unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Ooh, so I can see some comments. <laughs> and Sister Sarai says um, that she agrees with your point. And that Adam did not take better care of his wife, as the Bible does say that he was there when she ate. Um, he, he, I, I totally agree with with the point. He, 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 in actual fact, when you look at the the curse that God announced and the punishment, he, he actually says to Adam, "Because you obeyed your wife's mm. voice uh... above mine." And this is one of the things that is dangerous among husbands and wives is that we are obeying the voice of others and not the voice of God. And as I keep on saying over and over, and I'm not going to move from this unless somebody show me differently, God's word is God's voice. God's voice is his word. And when we obey others and not obey the word of God, then we put ourselves in the same position that uh, Adam did. He did not take yeah. care of his wife. If he was there and so on, he didn't. And uh, I wouldn't hang around on that point. What I would hang around on the point is that he didn't obey God. He obeyed his wife above uh. above God. And that was the, the major problem for him. The thing with Eve was, Eve was, Eve was deceived. According to the Apostle Paul, Eve was deceived. When she ate of it, she didn't fully know what she was doing. Adam did. So the scripture makes it quite clear that Eve was deceived in the transgression, but Adam did it willfully, knowing what he was doing. So let me just close yeah. with this point. It's like you and I knowing that sex outside of marriage is wrong, but yet we, even though we know it, we still go and do it. Okay. That's the same situation as what Adam was in. He willfully disobeyed God's word and and go and do it. Mm. So saying that, Pastor, thank you, Sister Sarai. Sister Sarai, for your comment, because we have these discussions within the young men and women all the time. Um, what advice would you give the young men, Pastor, um, based upon this scripture? Obey God. You know, this is this is this is the you hear what Solomon said, and going back to, I'm trying to remember exactly where it is, but let me hazard a um, a reasoning and just quickly go over to there. I think it's, I, I think it's, um, I'm going to try Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. I have a feeling that is, yes, I'm right. Um, you know, mm -hmm. my advice to them is very simple let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments in other words do what god says do what god's word said don't don't make absolutely certain that whatever you do you got permission from god's word to do it so if you're gonna sleep with a woman or sleep with a man do you have permission from god's word in the scriptures to do it if you do then go ahead if you don't don't do it <clears throat> you know if i'm going to steal if i'm going to covet if i'm going to have envy do i have permission to do those things does uh, the scripture give me permission the scripture doesn't give me permission so don't do yeah. it so my advice yeah. to young men is fear god that means reverence god and literally fear him in the sense that he could damn your soul to hell fear god and do what God's word says. That's my advice. 
I, I go to prisons all over the country the last 30 years and I do prison ministry and I've visited people who are doing life sentences and I only have three advice to give them. And um, the three advice is very, very straightforward. It's, it's no beating around, around the bush and I will, uh, I, and, and the, the three advice, I'd have to see if I can bring up my, uh -huh. my system here to show you. And I'm just going to write, write it here. And the three advice, I call it P uh, S O. Uh, and what I'd say to them to do is make sure you pray, study and obey. Okay. Yeah. That, that's my advice. Pray, study and do what God's word says. <clears throat> Solomon makes it quite clear. The whole duty of man, young or old, is to fear God and live according to what his word says. And it's pointless young people telling me it's, it's hard to do. It's not hard to do. It's easy to do. It's as easy to do as anything else. Trust me when I tell you that it's uh -huh. easy to do. Um, it's just that we may not want to do it because the flesh uh, doesn't want to do it. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I believe the Bible says that the flesh, this flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. And I think with that is what I would say is whatever is causing you that temptation, then flee. Like you said, just mm. cut it off, cut it out of, cut it out of your life. If it's going to cause you to sin, if it's going to cause you to trip, cut it out of your life. Get away from it because it's better that you cut that thing out. It's like it's like a wound or a a disease or a cancer. It's better that you cut it out and that part be thrown away than it affects your whole body. And the thing is, with sin, that I don't know if people realize that once it takes root into your life. Um, the emotional or the consequences behind it you can feel condemned it might take mm. you a while to get over that to receive God's forgiveness and his grace from it you know you can feel judged you can feel there, there's a lot of heaviness that comes with yielding into sin so pray study obey and flee <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I, I saw a comment and I think it's Ben. It says, Eve knew very well the instructions from God. <laughs> yes, I was just, I was just, I was just asking, I was pulling, I like to um, provoke, provoke thought, but yes, the scripture did say that um, she knew full well. So thank you so much. Eve knew the commandments just like Adam. Mm. Shun the very appearance. Don't give in to temptation. <laughs> so thank you, guys. So, um, I wonder if you would comment about how you would do your bank account, whether you would have one or two bank accounts. What did you think about what we mentioned about the bank account? So if you can, just let us know your thoughts about that. That would be great. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, it's been, you know, the, the conversations that we have as, as youths and, and, and young adults in terms of relationships, in terms of marriage, it is really nice just to be able to sit down with you, Pastor, and have this open conversation. I, I feel like it's just one-on-one. -on -one. I know others are, are listening <laughs> and I know they're watching and I know they're commenting, but it just feels like it's one and one <laughs> like we are having this conversation. Um, and it's such a wonderful thing. So thank you so much for being so open. Um, so being so open with us. So I would ask you, I would ask you this then. And it's a bit of a thought provoking question or maybe something that we might assume. So if the word of God said to Adam that because you listened to your wife, then this is a consequence. Could we speculate that if Adam said no to his wife, that the race may have been saved? I, 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 I'm sorry for my, uh, <laughs> I, I am, I speak very blunt sometimes and sometimes maybe it's not wisdom, but. That's okay. It, it's almost, it's almost, um, an inappropriate question because we don't know. Mm. That's what I'm saying. There's no mm. Bible that 
gives us any idea that um, that would be the case. However, sin would have been here because Eve had mm -hmm. sinned. You know what I mean? So, you know, I don't know what would have happened, whether Adam would have been affected by Eve or whether God would have to do something else. But that didn't happen. So it's almost the question is, what good is the question? Are you with me? Mm. What good is mm -hmm. the question? Even if we say, yes, Adam would have been whatever. The question is, it's a nonsensical one. It's irrelevant, in my view. I don't, I don't even spend time with it because it didn't happen and we won't know. Mm. <laughs> and so on. So that, that's my particular take on it. We, we don't know. We wouldn't know. And it didn't happen. So and so if 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 it was X or Y, what difference would it make? We are in uh, the situation that we are in, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like it. There's there's nothing nothing wrong, Pastor, with uh, sharing your <laughs> your view. Um, I like I do like to provoke thought because the word of God does say because you listen to Eve you listen mm. to your wife and also we do know that um it's because of a man had sinned why we all had sinned you know but like you said it is a fair point we do not know because the the, the truth is it happened and we are where we are okay so there so should sorry, be complete a um, she asked a question there says <laughs> but then maybe she's responding to what i've said but then we could ask what good is God's statement to Adam? But I would respond to say then, what good is God's word to us? Because it was only when God spoke that Adam eating off that tree became a problem. If God hadn't spoken, it wouldn't have been a law. And so if Adam had got an et off that tree without God giving that commandment, nothing would have happened to him in my view because Paul says, we would not have known sin except via the law. So when God placed the law to Adam, do not eat mm. of this tree in the day you eat of it, that became law. Just like yeah. when so, so saying what good is God's statement to Adam is still the same question as what good is God's word to us? God's word is law. God's word mm. is the way we should operate. God's word is the way we should function. So what good is God's word to us? Law and, and, and how we should function and operate. If God hadn't spoken, then no man would have sinned. Because we only know sin because of the law. That's the only reason why we know sin, because God states a law that makes it sin. So if God say, for example, this mouse um, is to be used every Monday at 10 only, well, that's now law. And if you use it any other day, you have sinned. And why is it that? Because God made a statement. And, and that's why it's yeah. important for us to recognize when people come to me and say, thus says the Lord, you're actually stating to me that God has set a law in place that you now have access to uh, and, uh, and so on. But only the word of God uh, as it's stated there. So what good is it to us? God's word is law. That's what guides us and directs us. Mm, that makes complete sense, Pastor. It makes complete sense. Thank you. I understand. Um, I've noticed Clive's Clive's comment here on Facebook. There should be complete transparency if husbands and wives have different accounts. So, are you are you saying then that they should have each other's pin? You know, what what does that transparency look like to you? Would be my question to you. Very good question. And, and, and my answer to that is absolutely yes, because you're one. So if you're going to hide things from your spouse, then, you know, what does this oneness mean? And why are you hiding it from your spouse? Is it because you don't trust your spouse? Because your spouse is stealing out the money? Then that might be a different situation altogether. You may have to look at that and use wisdom there. But you're one. Your body my body belongs to my wife, 1 Corinthians 7 states, and my wife's body belongs to me. That's my body. You know, I, went, I was, I was um, with my wife yesterday, and um, I said, that, that's my body. 
So you better, you know, more or less you better look after it because it's my body. And I said to her, this, this body is your body. And, yeah. um, you know, transparency means transparency. That's what the word means. Being transparent. Everything is in the open. Uh, wh why are you hiding things from your husband? Why is it you don't trust your husband? So maybe there's a deeper problem that one needs to iron out and to address. And there are people in the relationship, as I said before, that don't trust each other. And they're on a bad footing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, completely agree. And um, so Ben's comment says separate bank accounts should be okay once there is transparency. Some couples have separate bank accounts and also joint accounts. As Pastor Eros said, it doesn't matter how many accounts as that it is down to the indi different individuals, but honesty and openness. Yeah, and, and I agree with it's that. It's important. You know, can two, there should be agreement, there should be um, that oneness and transparency. I, I totally agree with that, but that's not the reality of what's happening at the moment. And that's why there's so much problem. <laughs> one of the reasons why there's so much problems in the relationship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i'm going to ask you this this may be our final question for the night it may not um we had this conversation last time about prenup and diaries now what's your view pastor should a christian be entangled in prenups I, if it's a thought what's your advice for them <laughs> yeah, very good question. I, I don't necessarily have a Bible verse that comes to hand immediately. So I have to, at this juncture, state to everyone, I'm giving my opinion, which is not necessarily biblical. But if while speaking, I find something, I would say it. <clears throat> what you, when my wife and I came together, when we were, we were kids, I was 20 and she was around 17 or something to that effect. And um, we, we came together, I got married, I can't remember what age I was, she was, I think I may have been 26 and she was around 22, I think, when we got married, I think that was the case. Um, we weren't millionaires, we weren't all of that stuff, and we had nothing, and so we built together and moved forward. The challenge comes today is, there's a lot of people who are getting into relationship for the wrong reasons, and let's say you for example you are let's say you're in your 30s whatever uh, or whatever and uh, let's take somebody then who's 50 uh, you know 40 50 and she's a millionaire she's got 10 million pounds in her bank account she meets a guy who doesn't have any money and around you are people who are getting into marriage and then divorcing you and then getting half of your money you have to be wise. You're going to have to think carefully, especially if you've got children and you were saving this for your children and for their education, for their, you know, longevity and so on. And then you get married. And I've seen it, by the way, where people got married and got stung because they didn't take any form of precaution, whatever that precaution looked like. And now they're in a divorce and now they're in court fighting over the money that this guy didn't, this lady or whoever didn't have access to it. So my advice to couples would be, you're going to have to use wisdom. I don't know whether that would be prenuptial or not, but one has to be wise. If I'm, if, you know, one might say, well, I need to put all this in my children's name or whatever, and this is what's going to belong to me and my spouse who I'm getting married to, uh, and so on. This is what I'm willing to commit. So I, I would say one has to be wise because a lot of people mm -hmm. are getting hurt in that same situation around the world. Wow. I don't have a Bible verse to say, you know, when you get married, you come in with 10 million, this one come in with zero, everything fuses into one, so you, you whatever. I mean, you know, I've seen it. I'm telling you, I've seen it where people have got hurt badly and it's just been very bitter and because people come into the relationship for the money and not for the person and and then they end up divorcing the person and running off with money so wisdom must be applied one needs to pray about it seek god on it and then do whatever they feel is correct for they, their situation um I, i'm not in that situation but my advice to people is pray about it and seek the wisdom of god take advice take counsel 
talk to your solicitors and all kind of stuff and then do what you think is right. So therefore, if you decide to go into the marriage and, and let's say fuse all of that money into one, then at least you know that's what you're going to do. If you decide you're going to put this amount of money into your children's name or whatever, or you're going to decide to do prenuptial. In other words, I'm not against prenuptial to some degree, <clears throat> uh, is the point I'm, I think I'm making, but I don't have no Bible verse. Uh -huh. And so therefore, it's going to be the wisdom of each person to do what they <clears throat> believe is right for them through praying about it and seeking the Holy Spirit guidance. Wow, oh, okay. Wow. Okay, thank you, Pastor. I know you said you, there's no Bible. I don't know if, uh, I don't know what I was Bible, expecting. But... Verses, I, just, I can't think of one at the moment. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay, Pastor. No, it's good to get your opinion uh, on it. Like I said, we, we had this discussion last week, so uh, it, it's good to get your 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 view on there. Um, like you said about praying about it and seeking the wisdom of God, I believe. <laughs> um would you have said that that might have been like a red flag in the beginning of the relationship you know w would there have been something that let you know that this person's after your money i mean praying about it and asking god who this person is i believe he would show you who the person is characteristics or attributes about that person that maybe is something that you need to look out for before you even say i do Say again, I'm, so I'm, you wouldn't I'm... need to go down that road. So what I'm saying is you, you spoke about praying and seeking the wisdom of God. And I believe yes. before you even get into that, before you even get into marriage, that's what you're meant to do, to really ask God, who is this person that's standing before me? Um, it makes me think of the conversations that you've been having about marriage and divorce. Probably won't go into that now. But um, I mean, just praying and asking God who this person is, like, show me, show me them reveal them to me let me see mm -hmm. them i know people change but really I, I believe and i could be wrong you can help me out or anybody else who would like to share a word that's perfectly fine um i believe really when you pray those prayers and you really ask god and you're designing god i really want to know who this person is standing before me let me know if this person is right for me or not then you wouldn't even need to get into marriage thinking about prenuptial agreements or you know am 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 i is my money safe because I believe once you start thinking about that, then are oh, we start thinking about ourselves instead of the relationship? So that's just kind of my thoughts and my thinking about it. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. You, you never know what you're getting into. That's the truth. Bishop T.D. Jakes makes the point that when you're going out with someone, whether courting, dating, whatever you call it, is you're only meeting their representative. So all you're doing. You don't meet the real person and say you start living with them. He says to know me is one thing, to live with me is another thing. And you should go into the marriage with, with trust, based upon what even Sister Sai yeah. is saying. She asks the question, my reply, does that not go against what said about trust? No, it doesn't, because I'm saying you've got to use wisdom. It's not about trust, it's about wisdom. That's the point I would hang on to. Um, you know, you're using wisdom, and you've got to be wise. And I think that you know you pray about it you ask the lord to show you um this person well i, I don't know whether the lord is going to show you everything until you get into that relationship i'm not so sure if you're going to be able to see everything to tell you the honest truth you, you might be able to say well the lord has directed me and showed me yes i believe this is the right person for me you get into the marriage you're going to have trouble anyway whichever way you go uh -huh. first corinthians 7 tells us that whoever gets married is going to have trouble are you with me? You're, you're not told what trouble you're going to have. That's the thing about it. <clears throat> so you, you, you're going to have trouble. And it's not, the trouble is not the key. It's, it's the way you work your way through the troubles that is key. The way we deal with it together. Because some of the troubles that you may have may not necessarily have anything to do with you two. It might be your mother died, your father died, your brother had an accident, your child suffered. Mm something and so on so it's 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 you pray and you know you hope that this is the right person you marry the person and the lord is in in agreement with it definitely is the right person in my view it's just the way you work together mm. That's the way you work together. Cool. one of the things that i i, I am tr um, asserting is that marriage is for life 
marriage uh, is not for divorce marriage is for yeah. life there should be no divorce in marriage and and if divorce comes in somebody is having a hardness of heart somewhere along the line and what i'm saying there basically is that um that's the reason why a lot of these marriages the hardness of art the selfishness um, that creeps in and destroys um the relationship mm, i agree i agree <laughs> Well, thank well, you thank Papa. you so much for tonight i really do appreciate having this um dialogue with you because it's it, it's needed and i think that we we um don't have these dialogue as frequently as possible whereby um people who are going through relationships and marriages etc could get some tips and uh, i think for me personally it's not that married couples don't know what to do i refuse to accept that they don't know what to do what i will accept is that they're not doing what they're supposed to do uh, are you with me because the same individual if i if you take any married couple you name anyone and i take that person and put them in another situation to give advice to a married couple they give the right advice uh -huh. they will t they will tell that couple have you prayed have you studied the word of god have you done what god says have you gone out and so on but we are exceptionally good at giving advice but not following it are you following me we are experts yes, sir. in giving advice but not following the advice we give we are mm. experts in it absolute expert in giving advice but not living by i taught let me I, I have said this before and uh, i'm not at that place now but i was there for many years <clears throat> i taught on listening skills um to to top managers around the world around the country uh, in europe in different parts of the world i taught it for many years i got them to pay me to teach it but when i came mm. home and to listen to my wife i wasn't practicing it oh are you following me and i remember yeah. one day saying to myself errol you teach to look at the person have eye contact face to face and here's my wife talking to me and i'm not even looking at her and, oh. and what i'm trying to say is we are expert in giving advice but not living by ourselves yeah, wow. that's the reality it's true so married couples it's know true. what to do they know what to do and they, they know what to do but they're just somebody not doing it you know somebody not doing it um and i am absolutely certain in what i'm saying they know what to do i met with a couple once and i told the couple what to do and when they left they did the opposite <laughs> Are you I, I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> they did the complete opposite. The complete opposite. Complete. It's just opposite. that we don't want to. We don't want to take the advice, and I think it, it does remind me of our Christian walk. Like God tells us what to do, He gives us the word, and sometimes we do the complete opposite. Like God doesn't already know what He's saying he is god and yet still we go and do our own thing because we want to do our own thing we don't want to submit sometimes maybe we find it's too hard to submit pride or you know gets in the way or self gets in the way and we mm -hmm. find it's too hard to just do that instead of doing what god has told us to do so yeah, I th you know, Hello. yes, that's, that, that's, I think, I think I looked at the difference between husbands love your wife and wives submit. And Jesus, and, well, not so much Jesus, but um, the Apostle Paul, um, who himself, some believe he may have been married, but at the time of writing, he wasn't married. I don't know. <laughs> If that's true, but I know he wasn't married when he wrote, but he gave a certain advice um, to married couples 
that was sound because it was through the Holy Spirit because he was inspired to write. Mm -hmm. And what tends to happen with married couples is the Bible, the Word of God, the Holy Scriptures is not on the table. What do I mean by that? They are not living according to the Word of God, both of them. The Bible is not on the table. It's not on their dining table. They're not studying together. For example, I met a couple once and um, they were going through their challenges. And I said to the wife, while the husband was there, I said, I want to ask you one question. And this question will tell me everything I want to know. But you don't okay. have to answer it because it's going to be revealing. And this is the question. Do you and your husband meet daily to pray and study the scriptures? Her answer was amazing. She said, no. She said, whenever she wants to meet and pray and discuss with her husband, the scriptures, he's too vexed. So they don't do it. And whenever he wants mm. to do it, this is what she said. And whenever he wants to do it, I'm too vexed. I'm too upset. So we never get to wow. do it. So wow. the point here is, if the Bible, the word of God, the word of God, yeah the most powerful thing in the universe, yeah. the most powerful thing that has everything about relationship and marriage, you know, so on, is not on the table. Then let me ask you, Sister Tabby, what's on the table? Yes. You see what uh, I mean? If the Bible is not there, then what's there? Because you're not living uh, by the Bible. You're not going by the word of God. You're not going by the things of God. Then what are you going by? You're going by your own yourself. thoughts. Let me tell you what that means. Yes. You're going by what Satan says. Uh, when you're not following the word of God, you're following Satan because there is only two uh, on the planet. Yeah. Two gods, if you like. The God of this universe and then the God of this world, which is Satan. And there is two mm. wisdom. James talked about the wisdom from above and the wisdom from beneath, which is earthly, sensual, and devilish. I, I, or the wisdom from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, and so on, which comes down from God to us. So if the scriptures are not there among couples, if, this, if you listen to me, couples, you're on the ear. We're going to finish up in three minutes. If the scriptures is not open up in your home, then what mm. is? Where are you going by? Whose guidance and teachings are you going by? That's the reason why you could end up in divorce, end up in remarriage, because the scriptures is not on the table. The scriptures is yeah. not open up. You're not praying. You're not studying together. Obviously, if you is one is saved and one is not saved, we don't expect that. But even if the saved one is there, is the scripture still open? You know, is the scripture mm. still open? Are you praying? Are you studying God's word? And are you obeying? Going back to the the the, the, the point that I made earlier, uh, this particular point here, is the scriptures open up on the table? Are people praying in their home? Are they studying the word of God? And are they obeying what God says in their family? If they're not, then they're going according to what Satan says. Because what, what I mean by that is, I get upset, right? My wife says something and I get upset. So I decide not to go the Bible way. And then I just curse her out. I dog her out. I treat her like a dog. I talk to her how I want. That's satanic. That is satanic. The scripture says, love suffers long, but it is kind. So if I'm not treating, treating her kindly, and I'm treating her harshly and I'm abusing her, or if I'm abusing him, because there's a lot of women out there abusing their husband. They're not submitting. They are not respecting their man. They're not respecting him for whatever reason. Um, mm. Then that is satanic. And that's exactly what I see happening. The Bible is not open up in, in our homes. And when the Bible is not open up in our homes, what we have opened up is we open up to satanic attack. Yeah. And Pastor, just so to Tabby, add to that stubbornness <laughs> as well. Uh, well, absolutely. 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 I want to say again, thank you so much for tonight. And, um, you know, it's been truly amazing, actually, to tell you the honest truth. And I'm so glad that the brothers and sisters are here and uh, many thoughts. But I want to say thank you again. Wish you all the best in going forward. I pray God will bless you and bless you with the best husband that there possibly is. I, I think you should get a husband like me, you know. 
Uh, I think pastor. <laughs> yeah. I, I leave that me. to your wife. <laughs> pastor, oh, I, yeah. I I would like to say I I've just I recently heard of a young couple who who's mm. getting married. So I just wanted to say uh, congratulations to Brother Kiefer and Charity. They are from South London, um, Kitter Road. So really, it's amen, you're amen. probably surprised. But congratulations. I do know of another one who's getting married soon from LWF, Minister Daniel. I don't know if it's public now, but it is public now. So Listen, God Daniel, is doing is a, an amazing before? work. Is that I know, I don't think before? Okay, okay. No, I don't okay. I don't think he, he's been on that when I was on, but um, okay. Okay. <laughs> um God bless you. Thank you, Pastor, so much. You're welcome, for your time. you're welcome. Have a great evening and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. God bless. Bye. Wow, that, that was truly an um, amazing session with the beautiful sister Tabby Allen from the church in Enfield under the leadership of Pastor Gladstone Reavers. And as you know, I call it the Tabby Allen Show, actually. So um, next time I'll promote it that way. But she's just truly, truly amazing person. Uh, in fact, the way the story goes, I was invited to... Um, minister at her local church many, many years ago, many years ago. And when I preached at that local church, she gave her life to the Lord. And I've been following her through ever since. So I phone her every so often just to see how she's getting on. And uh, I must say she has grown mightily, you know, in the Lord since, since that time. And uh, to God be the glory. She's just truly amazing. So thank you, everyone. Really do appreciate you um, coming on tonight. Tomorrow is Thursday. It's, I'm teaching, as I say, on the book of Revelation. What I do intend to do um, is to actually um, um, go through from verse 1. So that's what I intend to do. So I'm going to start at chapter 1, verse 1, and um, go from here, right from here. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, so tomorrow, I, I don't, I'm not going to go fast. We've got 22 chapters um, and uh, 21 verse here. So it's quite a big book. I think the book of Revelation is quite easy to understand. Things that um, are, are not explained to us fully, I just leave it. You know what I mean? Um, when it says, you know, so-and-so had seven heads. Well, you know, I don't try to draw a picture with seven heads. I just leave it. It just says seven heads. I don't know how to look clue what the heads look like. Are the heads black, white, blue, purple? What is it? I have no idea. So those things doesn't bother me because it doesn't give us the description. It just gives us an idea of what's happening. So what I will be doing um, from tomorrow, every Thursday, I'll be looking at the book of Revelation. I will be going as slow as I can and as fast as I can. So if it takes me three Thursdays to be in, Revelation um, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, then so be it. Um, and that's how I intend to go through the book of Revelation. So if you want to join me on a Thursday, that's what I will be doing. And there is another teaching in the book of Revelation. I don't I have the flyer here with me. If I can bring it up in time, I, I will do so. I don't have it here with me. But um, it's on the corporate website, actually, cogop.org dot uk and that is by dr pastor um um paul stewart and that is seven o'clock till eight thirty says so an hour and a half i start at nine o'clock till ten thirty so he's a doctor he's a pastor he has studied these things uh, probably know much more than i so go and visit him um you need to go to cogp.org.uk and the zoom Count is there and you you'll be delighted to know that he's a man of god and he's a an amazing teacher by the way he's very very good and if if needs be a, and i could get him on this show as well to to teach a bit of the, that we will do so don't forget if you want to come on this show and you want to come on just let me know and uh, i'll bring you on i have no challenges with that i just want to say again that um, Monday night is what I'm going to call family, relationship, divorce, remarriage. So that's dedicated to Monday and, uh, you know, up until Christmas at least. And then I will decide whether or not 
going forward from January would be the same. But that would be the case every Monday night um, from 9 to 10.30. Family, relationship, um, sex, you name it. Straight talk, real talk. Uh, and I'll try to invite as much people as I can. Tuesday is open at the moment for anybody who wants to teach. Um, Wednesday is youth night. It's Tabby Allen show type of thing. It's um, also a national um, youth leader as well that has a say what happens. Then Thursday is, as I mentioned, um, Book of Revelation. And then Friday would be men's night, talking about men's issues and so on. So that would be the way that we, we go forward with regards to that. Uh, don't forget, I did ask everyone to go and take a look at... Um, uh, Sandra May Designs website. I think it's an amazing website, and and the, the things they are really, rather than getting them at Amazon, right? Why not get them at Sandra May Design, right? Yeah, let's help a sister out. Uh, I that I really do agree with that. So uh, I'm sure she's going to open up her shop to a lot more things. You know, that's why I love the Asians. You know, they don't just sell one item in their shop, is it? They're selling this. They're selling that. Even in some of them, they're selling meat, they're selling all, whatever, whatever. They're just truly amazing, the Asians. And, and so we should adopt the same type of principles as well um, that they have adopted. So uh, I strongly recommend that you take a look, and that's the address there. Right, um, as I said before, if you'd like to support this ministry, go ahead and do so. The details are on the screen. Um, you know, you can take your mobile phone out right now. And um, you just um, text um, text the word give, and someone sent me a message. And, I, I, and let me see if I can do it on my screen before I go NDI. Let's bring that one up. Click to begin broadcast, and it says start broadcast. And I don't know what that's all about, but let me see if I've done it. Um, let me see now, NDI. Okay, let me see. If I've done it, I don't think I have done it at all. So I'm going to leave that one. Um, I thought I'd done it before, but it uh, didn't, uh, didn't work. Um, okay, so I should be there somewhere. Um, but I'll see it nonetheless. Um, so I'm going to leave that idea. Oh dear. Okay, there you are. I think that's you. Let me see. Right. So I'm going to show you now. So that's, yeah, that's my phone here. So for example, if you go to the Word, um, let me see, and you just go to, I don't even know what I'm doing now. I go to my text settings, and you just type in the word give. That's all you have to do, G-I-V-E. And then what's the number now? Let me see the number. The number is 07. Four, okay, so oh seven four eight zero seven eight three one three zero. So when you send that, it takes that. What happened basically, hopefully, it should work. It it sends it off and then it sends you now a, a, a text. And there is a text, just click on the link and then it opens up right there. Isn't that amazing? And there you are. You can therefore then go ahead and and give. You can actually. Choose a category that you want to give to. I want to give to youth ministry, for example. You type in your email address and, and whatever, if you want to do that. And then put in your amount uh, there, and that's it. That's it. Straightforward, isn't it? All right. Or you can go to the website, and there's a tab at the top that says give, or you can go to that one. They all lead to the same place. They all lead back to here anyway, so it really makes no difference. So right, what, what am I going to do now? I think I'm going to go over to um i thought i was but uh, i'm going to do it on this one now um let me see what i'm doing here um i'm just testing something my brothers and sisters and uh, see if this works um let me see how that works okay mind the same thing Okay, that's yeah. I'm gonna show you um what I spend some of my nights doing, so you're not gonna believe what I do. Um how I pass the, the 
time away sometime. Why is it showing me the same thing all the time? Okay, maybe it's not. Let me see. Aha, aha. <laughs> maybe I'm trying to do the wrong thing, but let me let me go off here and see. I was doing something wrong here. Interesting. Hmm, very interesting. Right, it doesn't look like it's going to work for me at the moment because um, I was trying to do something here, but I can't find where it's gone to. So. But everyone, I want to say thank you so much again for joining us. I am going to leave you. So in fact, I'm already finished, but I was trying to <clears throat> show you something and somehow it's just not kicking off. I think it is now kicking off actually. Right. So um, let me see what's happening here now. Okay, let's start another one. So yeah, I I end up playing a game of chess with these guys around the world. And this is one of the ways I go about, you know, passing the time. And, um, you know, I, you know, this is a 15 minute chess game. So this, this guy, what's he going to do next? I don't know. But I hope he makes a mistake quick. But it's his turn to move. So you could watch me probably ch play chess if you want to. Um, and um, quite an amazing game actually. So I do spend the time passing the time playing chess. Um, and I'm just doing a, f a quick game. I made a mistake there. I made a mistake. Yeah, that's the shot I should have made. Um, that's the shot I should have made. And I did it wrong, by the way. But I do it that way. Um, and see what what transpires here. Let's see. Um, yeah. Or then to do that um, then I'm gonna have to draw back here that's perfectly fine um, right right now the game is warming up so I'm gonna go up here and see if I can cause any damage along that line um, so let me see let me let me take that I think that would be um, the wise thing to do probably um, let's go here um quite an interesting game so far yeah but that was obvious that's quite obvious it was going to be the case so let's go here um that's quite obvious um it's not really um boom 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 right i, I made a mistake yes i made a mistake um, should I do that? Should I? Should I? Should I not? Right. Dum 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 dum. So I'm going to push that piece out. Should I do that? Um. Should I? Should I? Should I not? Um, should I? Should I? Okay. 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 If I do that, that would be quite interesting. Move. I go here. Um, that could be. Let me go up there and have some fun. See how it comes. Yeah. So, thank you, everyone. I'm just having a game of chess there. And see you guys later. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>